Good morning. Uh, Stephen Arrington here with you today outside in our community beside our wonderful church and in this lovely neighborhood. And of course, we're focusing again this week in prayer as we're doing each week sharing prayer sessions. Today is a very special place for me. It's We've been meeting with the youth group here on this little patio area outside uh, for a couple reasons. Obviously, of course, we're dealing with you know, trying to keep a bit of a distance with each other, but also too, the point is to see our community, to see our neighbors. It's so easy for us to huddle up inside the building and study God's word, which is a great thing, but how much more challenged can we be if we're actually looking at a community? To my knowledge, none of these people attend our church. And so it's important for us to sit outside and look at our community as we pray for them. And so the youth group has been being challenged to, to begin prayer walks and to start thinking you know, intensely about our community and what is our presence in that community. So I wanna share some scriptures with you this morning before we uh, actually begin that time of prayer for our community. And this morning I want us to read out of Psalm 24 starting in verse one. The earth and everything in it, the inhabitants belong to the Lord. He has laid its foundation on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not appealed to what is false, who has not sworn deceitfully. He will receive blessings from the Lord. The righteousness from the Lord is his salvation. Such is the generation of those who inquire of him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. We have to be a generation that stands up in prayer. It is so important that we think daily on the words of God, meditate on them, ponder them, and do this through the holiness of prayer, seeking to cry out to God that his heart would be known throughout all the land. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for a day that we can come to you, a day that we can stand firm in our faith, knowing that your love for us so exceeds anything that we can possibly imagine. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray you break us for the community, that you would begin to stir in the hearts of everyone here, beginning right here around the church, Lord that you and your spirit fill them, that cloud of witness would so appeal to them that they see it, Father, and that they be compelled to know you, Lord. But may we do our part by going out, speaking, loving, and serving that community that so desperately needs you. Help us to see the clarity of those that are truly hurting, crying, and lost for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, church. In Luke 19, we find a verse where Jesus gives us an instruction, and it's very brief. You're familiar with this. It's when he went into the temple before his crucifixion, and he cleansed the temple. And the Bible says that he entered the temple and began to drive out those who, who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer but you have made it a den of robbers. I, I was very interested in figuring out where Jesus was referencing that the Bible had said that. And it comes from Isaiah 56. And listen to this. It includes the Gentiles and the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar and my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcast of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those who are already gathered. The idea of a den of robbers comes out of Jeremiah 7, 11. You can look that one up on your own, where he says, you've turned my house to a house of robbers. But it was encouraging me to see that God's intention was that, we, that he would create a house where those who came into it 
would address him in prayer. Now, if the only reason my kids ever came to me to talk to me was to get something, I would get tired of seeing them come to me. And so I think God, not that it's wrong to ask him for things, obviously that's part of prayer, but to come to God with the attitude of, I'm in his house with joy that I stand in his presence and speak to him. So today we're going to pray confessing our prayerlessness because so many times when I talk to God in prayer, it's just to get things. And God wants me to get to know him. And if I know him as my father, I don't have to worry about what he gives me. As Jesus told us, the birds of the air, they don't sow or reap, but they get their food. The flowers of the field, they don't uh, weave and sow, but they're clothed. And so we can trust God for what we need if we will seek him first. So we're gonna start praying. Father, we come to you thinking about these verses we've looked at, that your house is to be a house of joy and of prayer of all peoples. So Lord, we confess that at my own heart where you live, so my body is your house, but also the house of worship that we meet in that is called Calvary. Lord, that there are so many times we are prayerless. And Lord, there in Isaiah, when you talked about it being a house of prayer, you said, for all peoples, and as we walk this street that is connected to our church, right in our very neighborhood, there are people here and we don't know their spiritual condition. We don't know if they know you or not. So Lord, as we walk, we're asking for each house that we would be in prayer for them. God, that you would move us to prayer. You know them so intimately and we don't know some of their names at all. And God, we ask that you would bless them. Lord, I don't know who lives in each of these houses, and so I just ask that since you know all things, that you would speak to them, that your spirit would talk to them. Let them know their need of you. God, that you would bring them to a place of realizing a need of you. And Lord, if they do know you already, that you would bring into their heart a call to speak to you, to pray to you. Lord, I pray that for myself. I pray that instead of thinking and inventing and figuring out so much, God, that I would start by seeking you and seeking your wisdom for all things in our life. Lord, you're our father, and as a father, I know I just want to hear my kids tell me they love me and to, to just want to talk to me at times. And Lord, yet we treat you in a way that we don't want to, seems that we don't want to talk to you, that we also don't want to just get to know you. And Lord, the greatest joy of our life would be to get to know you. You said the, your, the fear of you would be the beginning of wisdom. And we understand that word fear to mean an awe and a respect and a sense of even worship of who you are. So God, I ask that you would fill our hearts with your presence and the knowledge of you, that your Holy Spirit that you've put inside the church and inside of each of us, that God the Holy Spirit would convict us of our sin and call us to communion with you. Lord, that's what we're asking for. We want revival. We know revival means that we come to a new place of obedience, and we know that won't happen unless we see you clearly and unless you work in our heart and our life. So God, I'm just asking right now in Jesus' name, not only for, for this community, for ourselves first, that God, not selfishly, but that we would love you and we would just be consumed with the desire to know you and to come to every person that we could possibly reach with the message of who you are and your love for them. Lord, help us this day to love our neighbor as ourself, to seek their well-being, not for our sake, but for their sake, that they might know you, the giver of life, the supplier of all our need. Every good and every perfect gift comes from you. It comes down from the Father of light in whom there's no variableness, nor shifting shadow, there's no shadow of turning at all. Great is your faithfulness to your people. And we ask now in Jesus' name that, Lord, you help us to know you. Amen.